the Windows 32 64-bit conundrum. The problem for Microsoft is that its IA64 and X64 versions of Windows actually run from different code bases and offer poor compatibility with a lot of existing 32-bit software. That problem is exaggerated by the fact that the 64-bit version of Windows don't run on 32-bit PCs. That means the market for developing 64-bit drivers and apps for Windows is artificially small and can't get bigger because there are software barriers to adopting 64-bit PCs that are of Microsoft's own doing. That chicken and egg problem has no solution outside of Microsoft figuring out how to merge its code versions together, which it doesn't have the time, inclination, expertise, or even an idea of how to do. Microsoft is betting that users will upgrade their PCs to 64-bit machines and continue to buy and run the old 32-bit versions of Windows until it can manage to clean up its act to the uh, uh, and the sticky bits and deliver a 64-bit EFI savvy version of Windows for the mass market. And that looks unlikely to happen by Windows 7 in 2010. Perhaps Windows 8 in 2013 will deliver what Mac OS X Leopard is did in 2007. Apple's rather elegant solution is to run whatever binary is appropriate to the existing hardware. That's also why Apple has been able to support both PowerPC and Intel hardware across a user base of roughly 20 to 27 million Mac OS X users since 06. Microsoft couldn't support PowerPC and Intel and Windows NT 4.0 despite having a far larger user base, greater resources, and a monopolistic lock on the market. In addition to being able to support entirely different processor architecture, Apple also supports the conventions of running either 32 or 64-bit code. If Leopard runs on a 32-bit Mac, such as the first-generation Core Duo machines, it runs the 32-bit binary. If it runs on a 64-bit hardware, such as the latest Core 2 Duos, it executes the 64-bit binary. There's no advantage to being, a, to being unable to run 64-bit software.